We have the management of Fortis Healthcare. As I said, it's a hospital's heavy day. Uh, so we had Yatharth Hospitals, Max Healthcare. Now we have Fortis uh, Healthcare, which came out with numbers. We have Ashutosh Raghubanshi, Managing Director and CEO of the company, with us to take some questions. Uh, Mr. Raghubanshi, good morning. Good to have you with us here. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Uh, you know, hospitals have be all been doing very well. And, uh, you know, your performance uh, in F524 indicates that top line went up about nearly 10% or so. So you're at about 68, 93 crores in revenues. Could you give us a broad outline? If you want to give a specific number, that'll be fantastic. What, a, what should we expect F525 to bring in as far as top line revenues are concerned, sir? So we expect a similar growth, a double digit growth uh, this year as well. Uh, and that would be basically led by uh, both the volume growth as well as uh, the RPOP growth. Uh, we have a uh, uh, lot of capacity expansion, which we have done. We have added about 246 beds last year, and we are adding about uh, close to 400 beds this year. Uh, we'll be creating a capacity of about 700, but we will be operationalizing about 400. So with all this, we expect to be at least in double-digit growth. Double digit and uh, sorry, the total beds after all of this expansion, etc. Where will this number be at? Say in the next one so, year. Uh, in, in next year, we are adding seven hundred beds, but we are operationalizing about four hundred of those within this year. So operational beds would be how many total? Total beds would be about four thousand eight hundred at that time. Okay. Uh, so I wanted your thoughts on margins as well because the hospital business margins have seen a significant improvement to 21% uh, and in Q4 I think you hit about 22.4% as well. What led to this improvement and what is the expectation for FY25? Yeah, so the uh, expectation was that we would have about 70% occupancy, uh, which we did not achieve. We achieved about 67% occupancy. However, the growth in RPOP was uh, high, and that was a result of the case mix change. Uh, we did a lot of high-end uh, surgeries. We did close to about 4,000 uh, robotic procedures, for instance, in this year. Uh, the surgical volumes grew by about 8% uh, year on year. Uh, and that led to a better uh, performance uh, for the year and, and certainly for this quarter as well. Uh, we expect this trend uh, to continue. Uh, there was some one-off item here. So in the hospital side, I would say that the corrected debitor would be 21%, uh, which is what we expected to close the year with. Uh, and we expect from here on, we would sustain it and, and better it uh, as we go through this year. So you were saying you'll sustain it at, uh, at about this 21% and perhaps you can even better it in FY25, correct? That's it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, there is a fear that some of the larger hospitals are seeing some plateauing in terms of volumes. Uh, you were talking about how you will see perhaps further volume growth, but you have uh, incremental capex as well coming on board. Would that be a bit of a concern if the entire industry is seeing, you know, uh, slower growth or plateauing of volumes? Uh, not at all. You know, the, the, I think the capacity which is available in India today is still uh, deficient compared to what the requirements are. Uh, so uh, whatever uh, capex we are doing is uh, for advancing the technology mainly and 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 the brownfield uh, expansions with which we are doing so we are doing brownfield expansions in hospitals where already the occupancy figures are above 70 percent and in some of these hospitals is nearing 80 uh, percent so that capacity absorption will happen very easily so that is not a concern. In Even in the last year, we did a total of about 700 crores of CAPEX. Uh, majority of it was for upgradation of uh, the medical infrastructure uh, and some of it for uh, uh, enhancing the, some of the uh, capacities. Uh, but uh, that will continue. That is not a concern at all in my view. Uh, there is always a seasonality in healthcare business. Uh, so, uh, this uh, plateauing stage currently is, should not be seen as a trend. Uh, this is only a, a sort of a, uh, a localized phenomena which is there for, for a short while. All right. Hi, sir. Good morning and good to see you in. Nigel on this side. Let's turn our attention to the diagnostics part of the business. Now, that's been a relative underperformer. 
if you could tell us why the growth is not as much as, say, some of your peer groups, and how do you see the trajectory going ahead? Do you expect double-digit growth even in this vertical? What about margins? Do you see a possibility that you could gradually move towards that 20% odds? Uh, certainly. The, to start with, you know, we definitely have had a disappointing performance on, on our diagnostic side. The growth has been uh, almost uh, just 2%, which is hardly anything. Uh, and that is on... Uh, uh, be, uh, because of multiple reasons, uh, we had a lot of challenges. We had also changed the brand last year. All those things impacted our business uh, as well. But we are seeing that the diagnostic industry is getting stabilized now and the competitive pressures are lessening. Uh, so we expect Agilus also to do well and have a volume growth. We're expecting about 9 to 10% growth at least. And that would come on uh, basis of uh, increasing our specialized test menu. Uh, we have a lot of focus on uh, uh, the uh, genetic testing, for instance. And with all that, we expect uh, to have a healthier growth th this uh, uh, coming year. And uh, we certainly expect to take the margin to about 20%. Okay, all right. And uh, margins to 20% in the coming year itself? That's FI25? That's right. All right. And the growth of 9 to 10%, that's the volume number, sir, or the revenue number? Revenue number. Yeah, okay, all right. Got that out of the way. And since we're talking about Agilis, uh, is there any timeline with regard to the IPO? I was reading a couple of articles just two or three days ago which suggested that maybe the PEs could want to dilute some stakes, so that's why you could be looking at an IPO. Could you clarify on that front? And what are the timelines about their IPO? Yeah, so as far as the peace stake in Agilis is concerned, we have all our options open. Uh, the IPO for now, we had withdrawn. Uh, however, uh, we will uh, look at all the options and take appropriate uh, call in the due course. Uh, as you might be aware that uh, we have a put option on us uh, from the peace for 31% uh, stake in uh, Agilis. And uh, in case that is exercise, we are contractually obliged to buy that from the PE uh, uh, stake. Uh, and uh, we believe that this business can further create values. It has been underperforming uh, with some structural changes, etc. Uh, and little more uh, concentrated effort. This can go to a uh, next level. So we think that there's a lot of value in this. We will decide at the appropriate time and certainly let you know at that time. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Raghunchi, uh, you know, that old saga of that IHH open offer, I think the matter is still sub -judice. Could you give us an update? Where is that at? I mean, is there anything moving at all? Yes, that is still sub -judice. It is at the high court level and uh, uh, the issues, uh, we do not know when, when it, it will get resolved. Uh, but we're expecting that uh, since the hearings are happening at a very good frequency, uh, we should see some resolution happening possibly by the end of the year. Are, are you close to sort of, uh, close to a point where, you know, uh, the, the final arguments would be made and, and or, or it's yes. still away? You think? At least hearings no. are happening frequently. Sorry. Yeah, go on. Yes, yes, yes. No, so what I was saying is that the hearings are happening very regularly uh, and the final argument stage is coming there. So we that's why we expect this to get resolved by the end of this year. Okay, no, got that. Ms. Raghunchi, uh, we leave it there. Uh, good luck to you. Thank you very much uh, for joining us and uh, appreciate your time here on CNBC TV 18. So good touch conversation uh, with uh, Fortress Healthcare.